just walking along here collecting pottery to make some cards. And then I saw something brown with a really nice or well, interesting design on it. It's just down there, pretty much in the middle. Here it is. Look at that. It's a bit worn, but it's a, a military button, isn't it? It's some kind of button. It's nice. Made by Fermin in London. Oh, I wonder who or what that stands for. Well, it's a beautiful morning. It's so quiet. The sun is out. There's no wind. And I'm going to jump on an Uber boat just here and take a trip into central London. So I'm waiting for my boat and if you ever come to London, believe me, this is the way to travel. Here's my boat. It's just uh, so relaxing. You can even get a coffee or a tea. scraping around in this area here and I have just pulled out what I first of all thought was um, a necklace maybe or a chain but look at this. This looks like a beautiful large chunk of chain mail I think if I'm not mistaken. Just look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I'll have to check to make sure it is, but I think that's what it is. Wow. So I'm scraping around here and there are quite a few pins. And notably, just here, look, there's the tiniest little bead. Tiny, tiny, weeny little bead. Isn't that see a coin here actually but that's bound to be a modern penny yeah that's a modern penny I shall put my bead away um, like I said lots and lots of pins see a tiny one here I can put the tiny bead on the tiny pin maybe It's a ring, look. Oh, wow. It's a ring. Um, it probably isn't gold. And it looks like stones come out, doesn't it? exciting it's always amazing finding a ring it looks like there's something actually etched on there 
does that say? Hmm, I am not sure. I don't think it's gold though, it's quite light actually. Wow, still a ring though. Fantastic. Ta da! I think I'll stick around here for a while. See what else there is. Oh, what's this? Oh. Now, is that a modern penny or not? No, I don't think it is. I think that's slightly older. Yeah. Now that could be a Victorian penny. Look, I'm going to put it in the water, give it a little rinse off shortly. But as I'm on a bit of a roll here, I'm going to concentrate on this spot. So I'm going to put it in my pocket for a minute. I think that's Victoria, look. Another coin. <laughs> What's that? Oh, now that is a modern penny. Yeah, that's a modern penny. Still a coin though. Now, just down here, we've got our first lace shape or lace egglet of the day. but it's been kind of torn in two. I found quite a few of these near Greenwich, actually. It's like a nice cod bottle marble. Uh, look at that, isn't that pretty? Just hold it up to the sun. I've just seen a coin down here. I got excited for a moment. But it's actually a modern 2P. So I'm going to leave that for a future mudlark to get excited about. Let's see if we can find something a little bit older. I've just seen another coin and I know it's modern. Can you see it down there? Zoom in, see if you can see it.
No, it looks like it might be a euro. Come on, I want to find an old coin. Let's have a look at this. That is a five... Oh, it's a Polish coin. Well, there you go. It's getting a little bit more varied. There we are. Polish coin. I'm just prizing out this bit of lead here. See if it's anything of any consequence. Probably, probably not. I'll turn the camera off and I'll come back when I've got it out. And I've prized it out, and guess what? It looks like. Um, part of some stained glass window, which is uh, rather interesting, isn't it? Look at that. Gosh, I may have to take that with me and clean it off. There, you can see a green bit there. It's all mangled up. Right, I'll have to pop that in my bag. I wasn't expecting to pull out a piece of... Um, stained glass window. I wonder if there's any more down there. How interesting. Right, I'll have a little bit of a, a search. Now, what else is there down here? It's another coin. Just down there. Looks like a foreign one. What's that? I don't recognise this one. What's that on there? It's quite pretty, whatever it is. Looks like it's got some kind of covering which is peeling off. What is that? What's this? Oh, it is an artwork. Let's prop it up down here and have a look at it. abstract piece of art that somebody has thrown in the river. Looks like another piece of artwork here. Look at this one. So who's been throwing their artwork in the River Thames? I think uh, we will have to put it up against the wall. Make it world famous. I've just seen the edge of something round over here and it's probably another modern coin, but let's go and check it out just in case it's something more interesting like a button or a, I don't know, another foreign coin or some gold maybe. It's just here, look, just there. What do you think? Could even be a, an old washer. Let's get it out. Oh, it's a button. It's a button. Oh, do you know what? It's a button. And the good thing about it is that, it, oh, excellent. It has a name on it. Now that's fantastic because that means that I can now follow up this name, find out more about it and hopefully transform this video of modern and foreign coins into something fascinating. 
Excellent. Let's give it a little rinse off. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to have another look around in this little area first. I shall put that safely down there where I don't forget about it. There it is, look. That's a lovely little button. A button with a name. Never underestimate it. It can take you to places you never imagined you'd go. There are a few pipe stems around, but I haven't seen any bowls. It's probably a little bit too stony around here, so the pipes have all broken up. There's a tiny bit of pipe bowl here. It would have been a basket weave design. It's very, very small. I do have a, a few whole basket weave design pipes. And, you know, sometimes you find a tiny fragment of pipe bowl and it feels quite frustrating, but you can still get a glimpse of what there was on there, actually. And I've got a few um, sort of fragments of pipe bowl at home that would have been absolutely wonderful if they were whole. I shall dig them out and show them to you. Got one with a cannon and one with what looks like a part of a bird. Oh, that's lovely. Newstead. H. Newstead. Okay, watch this space. back now. I'm going to go and get the boat and go back home. I have to say that that is a first. I've never pulled a piece of stained glass window out of the Thames mud before and I'd love to know where it came from. I wonder, I wonder, So now I'm going to take these pieces of art and put them up on the steps. There we are, that will do. When I left the river and crossed Tower Bridge, I noticed this coat of arms in several different places and it reminded me of the button which I found a few months ago and which is right at the beginning of this video. I hope you're well. Thank you very much for watching my video. I just want to tell you what an absolute pleasure and a joy it is for me to be able to share with you something that I'm so passionate about and that is searching for history along the River Thames and in other places of course and then just being able to share with you uh, some of the information that I find out. And the great thing is that sometimes, in fact a lot of the time, many of you have lots of information to share with me about the finds too because I'm no expert but I do enjoy researching and finding out what I can about what I find in that mud and some of the stories and the information that come to light is just so brilliant. You learn things that you never even knew you needed to learn and you find out about people that have been long gone and you can really bring their stories back to life. So. I had a great outing there on the River Thames in central London 
And here in front of me, I've got a nice little spread of some of those objects, which I'm going to talk to you about now. And I think I'm going to start with probably the oldest object or item, which is the amazing piece of chain mail here, um, which is just amazing, I have to say. And it always sort of makes me imagine these knights having a great big battle, all wearing uh, chainmail armour. So I'm not quite sure what it's made out of. It's often made out of iron. I was thinking it was copper alloy, but I'm not sure. I've also got another piece here, which I did feature on a video not that long ago. It's a completely different size, so probably from bits of mail that were on different parts of the body. But I actually still need to show them to my Fines Liaison Officer at the Museum of London. And so then I'll be able to find out a bit more. But for now, let me just read you a little bit of information that I found on the good old internet about medieval, which I think it's probably medieval, medieval chainmail. So here goes, I shall read you a little bit of what I found out. Chainmail is a type of armour made of small rings linked together in a mesh. It was used widely during the Middle Ages between the 5th and 16th centuries. It was labour intensive to create. Blacksmiths spent hours of forging tiny metal rings into a coat of chainmail. It was cleaned by swirling the armour around a barrel full of sand and vinegar. The iron coils helped deflect jabs from swords and even proved useful in battle when facing arrows from most longbows. It was expensive and those knights who wore it definitely had an advantage in battle. In the rules of the medieval Templar knights, those without it were allowed to withdraw from battle if injured, while those with chainmail were not allowed to. It declined in popularity, in particular after the invention of the musket ball. Who wore it? Wouldn't it be great to go back in time and just see who was wearing this chainmail armour? So now let's talk about buttons, and I do love buttons, which is just as well, because I find an awful lot of them. It's quite a common find on the foreshore, and the Thames foreshore seems to have a liberal scattering of buttons on it, as well as other things used to attach garments back over the centuries. And so this one here I found a few months ago, and when I was walking back across the Tower Bridge, and my eye caught the coat of arms of the City of London, I immediately remembered this button. So when I got home, I looked it up and indeed it does come from the City of London Police. And the City of London Police were actually officially formed in 1832. So this button dates um, back to the 19th century, definitely, maybe not 1832, but maybe something like 1850 or 1860, something like that. So I'm very pleased to have been able to make that connection. Now, this other button here is just great, and it's a brilliant example of how a small button can um, bring back to life somebody from the past. On it, it says H. Newstead from Stratford, and upon investigating, I found out about Henry Keane Edward Newstead, who was a clothier and outfitter. He was born in 1812 and he died when he was 95, I think in 1905. He was married to Sarah and he had about 11 children. Now it's quite interesting because he was also, when he was 20, tried for larceny. He was acquitted. It was larceny of a servant, so he was accused of stealing something from his boss, but he was acquitted. And interestingly, um, when I started to look up a little bit more about that, I came across some old Bailey proceedings back also in the 1830s or the 1840s, where he was actually testifying against people who had been accused of stealing. And one poor woman at the age of 28 who was accused of stealing a sheet um, was transported for seven years. And so when he married in 1845, his profession was listed as being a pawnbroker. But by 1851, he was an outfitter. And so he was also living in Stratford with, with several of his children and his wife. And so I'm pretty certain that this button 
comes from Henry Keane Edward Newstead, clothier and outfitter from Stratford. And here we have my lovely little Victorian coin, which is from 1866. It's a Victorian sixpence. I found quite a selection of modern and modern foreign coins that day. I'll put a little picture up so you can see what I found. Um, the tiny one here, which has got George and the dragon on it, or at least a man uh, stabbing a dragon, fits nicely into the theme of, uh, of chainmail armour, actually, is a Russian coin. It's falling apart. I mean, it almost could be a forgery because it seems to be just... Um, uh, disintegrating <laughs> very very easily. So I don't know, I was under Tower Bridge when I found that so I expect quite a few people throw coins over the bridge maybe for good luck. And now for this really beautiful piece of lead glass window which I have unfolded and here it is in all its glory. I don't know how old it is I have been searching the internet for information about lead glass window and how to date it. I haven't found a great deal just yet, so maybe you are an expert on this very topic and if you are, please do get in touch and let me know. I will take it to my Fines Liaison Officer, he might be able to help. He knows pretty much everything about everything and maybe he can help to date it too. But what's really lovely about it is this piece here, it's got this beautiful green turquoisey sheen almost like a peacock feather color and I don't know whether that is actually bean colored or whether that is just because it's been in the mud if I put it a little closer to the camera there you can see this gorgeous shade of turquoise and then at other angles the color just seems to disappear altogether so it's been somewhat fascinating me and I would just love to know where it came from. I doubt very much that it came from Tower Bridge, although that was very nice to imagine. Um, but who knows? And I wonder how it got there. Is it something uh, from the war, from bomb damage, or is it more recent than that? I don't know. I've got a lot to find out about this piece of lead glass window. I've never found anything like it before. And so I shall keep you updated on that. Now, I did actually find some things that day that I didn't film, and that was because my camera um, was being a bit dodgy when I first got to the foreshore. So I'm going to put a picture of some of the other finds that I found that day, and if any of you can give me any information about them, that would be absolutely great. There's a few bullets, there's a few little, um, little metal objects, and there is a really pretty piece of lead, a tiny piece of lead with some decoration on. So if anyone's got any information on that, it would be great to hear from you. The other thing is that day I also bumped into a couple who were mudlarking and the gentleman of the couple found a beautiful lead seal. And so I had a look at that. I uh, couldn't really give him any information about it, apart from the fact that it did look really old. Well, what I want to say is that I found the other half after they left. And so if by any chance you are watching this video, then I believe I found the other half of your lead seal. So please get in touch so that I can give you this bit. I found the plain bit. You've got the really interesting bit. Um, but still, it would be really nice if both parts of that seal could be together. Um, and then when you show it to the museum, you'll be able to have both parts of it. So I think that's just about it for now. And I'd like to thank you again very, very much for watching my video. I hope that wherever you are, you're having a good day, a good afternoon, evening, morning, whatever time of day it is for you. I hope that the sun is shining. I'd like to thank you all for your wonderful support, for your comments and your feedback and your help with identifying my finds and for those of you that have sent me information about finds on all my previous videos. It's such a huge pleasure to be able to share all this with you. I feel very, 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 very fortunate. Now, if you would like to support me by buying me a virtual cup of tea, then I do have a Ko-fi account and I will put the details on the description to this video. But there is absolutely no obligation. 
the main important thing is that you enjoy these videos. That's what I really wish for you all. So have a great week everyone, take care and I look forward to seeing you again very soon for more exciting adventures looking for history along the banks of the Thames and elsewhere. Thanks, bye bye.